Hello everybody, this is Dr. Jawad. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button, bell notification, the like button, and leave a comment and share this video with a friend or post it on your Facebook, Instagram, whatever site to help share with others because Karen is sharing and I appreciate it. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like button, the subscribe, uh, the bell notification, and if you want to leave a comment or a question. Now, I enjoy, as you can see, I enjoy answering all the questions that are posted down below my videos. However, when they're too complicated, because everybody is an individual and sometimes those questions, I need more information to give a suitable answer. And that's why I direct you to my webpage to, for a consultation for you know, 15, uh, 20 to uh, half hour consultation so I could answer them fully because I do need some more information. So that's why I usually say, go to my webpage. Okay, so one of the videos I'm doing, I have, it's on 5-HTP and I'll put the, one of the links down below for the video. So 5-HTP, so the pathway is you start off with L-tryptophan and then you, it converts to 5-hydroxytryptophan, which is called 5-HTP. Then it converts to serotonin. Then it converts to an acetyl serotonin, which then the end product is melatonin, which helps you sleep. Now, the constituents that allow the cofactors, which allow each step to happen is, so when you have L-tryptophan, what's needed is iron, niacin, folate, vitamin C, and calcium, which helps convert to 5-HTP. Then you need vitamin B6 in the form of P5P, which is, that's better. Zinc, magnesium, and vitamin C, which helps convert as a cofactors to serotonin. Serotonin, then you hit vitamin B6, iron, and vitamin C, which then converts to an acetyl serotonin. And then vitamin B6, folate, and SAMe convert to melatonin. So this is why sometimes people who are trying to get to sleep, they take melatonin, it works or doesn't work, or they take 5-HTP and that doesn't work or it does work because you need all these cofactors involved in the minerals and vitamins to help each step along. When it comes to biochemistry, biochemistry, there is what's called a rate limiting step. And the rate limiting step is basically, it's a safety mechanism. So, our, so we don't take an overabundance of something. For example, when you, let's say you're going on a road trip and you take in a bunch of carbohydrates to break down the form of glucose, which is our energy source. So you take in a bunch of carbohydrates at 7 a.m. knowing that you're not gonna eat again at 7, till 7 p.m. So what happens, you take in all these carbohydrates. But the first biochemistry, the mechanism, it's called a rate limiting step. Basically that's saying the body is only going to utilize what it needs and then it's either gonna exc excrete it or store it in the meantime but it doesn't go back to get it. So when it comes to the serotonin, mel serotonin melatonin pathway, people think, hey, I'm gonna stack up on L-tryptophan. No, the first reaction from L-tryptophan to 5-hydroxytryptophan, it's a rate limiting step. So your body's only gonna utilize what it needs to, you know, when it converts it. Now 5-HTP, 5-HTP is phenomenal because it helps, it, what it does, it converts us to serotonin, which calms down your system, which converts to melatonin, which helps you sleep. All right, because 5-HTP, it's believed to increase the levels of serotonin, which when you have an increase in serotonin levels, it may be beneficial for several conditions like depression, insomnia, migraines, weight loss, things like that, fibromyalgia, because now, 5-HTP is an amino acid our body naturally produces, but for somehow, some way or form, where we, if we become depleted in it, then we would need 5-HTP to help stabilize the body. Now, one of the benefits of 5-HTP of taking it, it could aid in weight loss by increasing feel, feelings of fullness. So you don't, so you're going to be feel full, so you're not going to overeat. It may help with depression by increasing serotonin levels. Now, this is a natural antidepressant, 5-HTP, because when you're depleted in serotonin, this is where you get mood issues. So by taking 5-HTP, which converts to serotonin, which helps you sleep, because we always feel better when we get good night's sleep. Okay, it could improve the symptoms of fibromyalgia. Now, fibromyalgia, you just have muscle aches all over. One of the reasons is because you're not sleeping. So let's go upstream. So if you're not sleeping, you're gonna feel all these aches and pains. 
So by taking 5-HTP, which will increase serotonin levels, which will increase melatonin levels, which will help you, which will help put you in a deeper sleep and thus improve the symptoms of fibromyalgia. It could also help reduce migraine frequency because people who have migraines are low on serotonin typically. So what does serotonin do? It not only helps with gastric motility, but it's a vasodilator. So by taking 5-HTP can help reduce against migra migraine frequency and migraines, it could be caused by a plethora of things. It's just, let's try 5-HTP as one of them. And lastly, number five, the benefits, five benefits. It may promote sleep by increasing melatonin production. Yes, because the cascade, tryptophan, 5-HTP, serotonin, and acetylserotonin to melatonin, that will help improve our sleep uh, production, put us into a deeper sleep. Okay, so I put together 11 questions off my 5-HTP video. Again, I'll put the link down below. And remember, if you have questions, you could always schedule a consultation and I can answer them one-on-one -on -one more thorough. Number one, for how long do I have to take 5-HTP? Will I be able to deep sleep naturally after two months of, 5 -H of taking 5-HTP? Now, when it comes to how long it's going to work, everybody is different. Men break down different than men, women. It depends on if you're white, black, Mexican, or other. We all have a different mechanism or metabolism which helps break things down and also do with absorption. So it's possibly safe to take 5-HTP in doses of up to 400 milligrams daily for up to a year. Because the question is, well, how long am I safe to take it? And really, you could take it up to a year. So the most common side effects include heartburn, stomach pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, drowsiness, sexual problems, and muscle problems as well. And it's been noted that large doses of 5-HTP, such as six to 10 grams daily, actually are possibly unsafe. Okay, so number two, I have an autoimmune disease which causes my thyroid issues. I have both Graves, that's hyperthyroid, and Hashimoto's. That's hypothyroid, and that's an autoimmune. An autoimmune disease meaning that your immune system is attacking its own self, and when it comes to Hashimoto's, that means attacking its th your thyroid. So you're going to have, it's like this roller coaster ride. So I have issues with sleep, so I take L-thionine, good for you, at night. I also take St. John's Ward for my OCD. It is used in place of antidepressants. That's phenomenal, good for you. So what are your thoughts on me taking L-thionine and 5-HTP together at night? So this L-thionine or theanine, that will help calm down the body because L-thionine or theanine crosses the blood-brain barrier and it will stimulate what's called GABA, GABA, gamma amino butyric acid, which will help calm you down. If you have too much coffee, if you take L-thionine, sure, it'll calm the jitters. So yes, you could take them together. However, you, what you cannot take with 5-HTP, California poppy, catnip, chamomile, go to cola, Jamaican dogwood, kava kava, melatonin, skullcap, valerian root, root, and others like that because when you are increasing your serotonin levels, thus you're increasing your melatonin levels. So either, not say that you, can't, you cannot take them together, either take 5-HTP in place of melatonin or take melatonin in place of 5-HTP, but do not take them together, and l is great. Okay, number three. I take 5-HTP before sleep with ZMA. Great. Knocks me out for eight hours. Best sleep I ever had. Congratulations. Good for you. And when you get a better sleep, you feel better in the morning. Remember, because when you're sleeping, the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest, digest, and repair system is in charge now. So this is why it's so important when you get a good night's sleep because you feel fully rested, hopefully, in the morning. Number four, can we take 5-HTP with Wellbutrin XL? Thank you. The thing is, people who are taking antidepressants, any type of antidepressant, should not take 5-HTP because the antidepressants are ser selective serotonin re reuptake inhibitors. So it's kind of like that's altering the mechanism of how your serotonin is going from transmission to trans from nerve transmission to nerve transmission. And the medications that can these type of medications combined with 5-HTP could cause could cause what's called serotonin syndrome. Either your serotonin levels get too high or they get too low. 
you just are going to feel real out of it. So the answer is no, do not take them together. Number five, will I be able to sleep deep naturally after two months of taking 5-HTP? So if you have insomnia, my, my suggestion is find the root cause of insomnia. Is it too much stress, anxiety, uh, you know, thoughts, depression? Because in one study, people who took 5-HTP went to sleep quicker and slept more deeply than those who took a placebo. So 5 -H taking 5-HTP for insomnia may work. And researchers recommend anywhere from two to 400 milligrams at night to stimulate serotonin. However, it may take up to six, to, anywhere from six to 12 weeks to fully feel effective. So this is where I don't know how long it will take for it to be effective because everybody is different. Number six, I'm starting 5-HTP for two months and quit after, quit after that without any withdrawals. Congratulations. Okay, so number seven, I like this. Hey doctor, will 5-HTP help deadlifting when I was reading this and looking into it, I was like, oh, you know, sure, it's going to help with muscle recovery because you're going to go into deep, deep night's sleep and it's better for muscle recovery. However, doing further digging on this, too much serotonin levels in males increase prolactin, which anytime in males our prolactins increase, it's like a teeter-totter. It lowers our dopamine and our testosterone levels. So I did a video and I'll put the link down below about prolactin levels in males. So the answer is actually, no, it will not help your deadlifting. It'll actually hinder it due to increased prolactin and decreased testosterone. So that was a good, that was a good question. Thank you. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> Hello, is it possible to take dopamucana with 5-HTP for mild depression and for activity? And do they have a special way to take them? I guess there are, I think that, do they have a special way to take them? I think it's just basically in capsule form if that's how the question was, was meant to be. So now dopamucana, I think they're talking about mucana purians and I have the link down below. Okay, when it comes to the serotonin and dopamine biosynthesis, the pathway, you have, it's kind of like a parallel street, but there's one intersection. It's like with one, with one stoplight or stop and go light, depending on where you're reading it. Uh, listen to this. And it's an amino acid called the aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase. So what that does, it's like a stoplight. It only allows one to go. So with serotonin, you have tryptophan, 5-hydroxytryptophan, well, 5-HTP, which converts to serotonin. With dopamine, which is your get up and go, you have tyrosine converts to L-dopa, L-dopa converts to dopamine. Now, before the conversion of serotonin to dopamine, you have this amino acid. So if you're taking too much stuff that, for your serotonin levels, you're going to deplete your dopamine levels. Just as if you're taking stuff to increase your dopamine levels, you're going to decrease your serotonin levels. And if you think about this naturally, what does dopamine do? It's for your get up and go. So if you're taking supplementation, which increases your get up and go, then you're not gonna feel rested and vice versa. So when it comes to that pathway, that's one thing that you have to look out for. And no, I don't know how much you should take for either of them, okay, to keep that pathway balanced. Remember, everything works different for everybody. Now, when people want to increase their dopamine levels, they start taking tyrosine. Now, the one caveat with, ty with tyrosine, remember, tyrosine plus iodine helps improve your thyroid function. So the thing is, you don't want to take too much tyrosine in hopes of increasing your dopamine because you don't want to shut down or increase your thyroid hormones too much. So there's one, there's one herb or supplement that I recommend, and that's muconopurians. So when it goes from tyrosine to L-dopa, it avoids that rate-limiting step because muconopurians, it's kind of like feeding the dopamine stores through the back door and you bypass that rate limiting step. So one thing that you don't want to do, you don't want to throw off the balance between serotonin and dopamine. All right, number nine. Hello. Hello. How long is it allowed to use 5-HTP without depleting dopamine? That has got to be one of the number one questions when it comes to 5-HTP or meconopurians. I don't know. The thing is, I don't know because everybody's different. So by taking 5-HTP on its own, you're depleting dopamine, norepinephrine, norepinephrine and epinephrine, that whole the adrenaline pathway. This is because the synthesis of both serotonin and dopamine 
they share that same amino acid, the L-aromatic amino acid decarboxylase, because it's like the light. It's only gonna be on for one in one direction. And again, you want to be able to balance out both. All right, number 10. I've been taking five milligrams of Lexapro for nine months and stopped yesterday with two milligrams of Lexapro for two weeks use. When can I start 5-HTP? This is a phenomenal question. Now, if you're trying to cut antidepressants, benzos, all that stuff, I always refer people, my patients or clients, to a website, the Ashton Manual. The Ashton Manual, www.ashtonmanual.com, that will write out a program for you to safely taper off the medication that you want to be. The thing is, Lexapro is in a class of antidepressants called Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, SSRIs. And it works by increasing the amount of serotonin, a natural substance in the brain that helps maintain mental balance. The thing is, now I've read research where you want to be clean from anywhere from nine months to 12 months before taking 5-HTP. Because it's not that the, the fact that, the, that it's, you, you haven't take, taken it, it's the receptors that you want fresh as they can be, and that takes about anywhere from nine to 12 months, a good year for those receptors to be safe to, um, bind with the 5-HTP supplement, so to speak, that you want to take. So I'd, I would respectively wait in it from nine months to 12 months. Okay, number 11. Do you think 5-HTP could help with nighttime eating syndrome? <laughs> I like this one. I constantly wake up in the middle of the night and eat about a thousand calories of junk. A thousand calories of junk, that's, you know, a Big Mac is 500, about 540 calories. So you're equivalently eating two Big Macs in the middle of the night. I wrestled in high school and college and this nighttime eating all started back when I was drastically cutting weight. Now I'm 34, and I can't stop eating at night. Okay, so you're 34, so you graduated from, let's say, college at 24. This is 10 years. So one, I would say, if this is still an issue, I'd say address the issue. And two, yes, 5-HTP may increase the feelings of fullness. So there is a benefit of taking 5-HTP because it increases the feeling of fullness, which will cause you to eat less and lose weight and also to maintain a nice sleeping pattern. So weight loss can increase the production of hormones that make you feel, that make you feel hungry. So by losing weight, sure, it's gonna help stabilize the ghrelin and the leptin, those two hormones that allow that satiety, satiety, I'm sorry, satiety and feeling you know hungry and full. So yes, it may, the answer to the question is yes, it may help you. Okay, so, when it comes to these questions, I like to try to do this. I'm gonna to try to do this more often, um, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of content, please leave a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to answer more questions, which I'm gonna to try to do in the near future. And if you like this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.